I can boil down most of what I've learned as a pilot to a few key points. And I promise if you can take these to heart, it's gonna make you a safer and more confident pilot. So there's a few key areas here I'll throw on screen that I wanna cover, starting first and foremost with safety. The big thing on safety here is, is trying to avoid the big stuff. Like I have done several videos on this. Like I've done a deep dive on the safety of general aviation because I think it's a lot more safe than people think and certainly than what YouTube gives it credit for because there's accident reports like all over YouTube. Some of that can be helpful. Some of it I think can be taken too far to where a lot of people are scared to fly. But if you study the accident statistics, it's really the big stuff that can hurt you. It's it's loss of controlled flight under a thousand AGL. It's controlled flight into, into terrain. It's inadvertent flight into IFR. It's these big things. And if you look at all the common denominators, there's two, really one common denominator. It The, the big things come down to pilot error and decision making. But the question becomes, what do we do with that? Like, yes, we can focus on being safe and making good decisions, but like, what does that look like practically? And I can tell you, because I have made a few mistakes in the cockpit and I can tell you how this happens. Like no one starts out a flight saying, hey, I'll just bust into IFR, I'll just, you know, controlled flight to terrain. Like, Obviously you're not gonna start out the way, but I will tell you the way that it does happen is this, it's that safety slips in small stages. I've had a couple moments in the cockpit where I scared myself and I can tell you the common denominator is that I made one decision and then kept pushing it and then kept pushing it. And none of those decisions were scary. Like I'll give you a perfect example. I was flying into um, an airstrip in Idaho and I saw the, the runway was like a lot lower than I thought. And so I, I, I was a lot higher than I thought. And I thought, oh, I can, I can still make it. So I'll keep going. So I was kind of high and fast. And then there was other traffic coming and I thought, well, the best way I can stay out of the way is just go ahead and turn in and be in front of them and just get out of the way. So then I was trying to make a short approach, high, fast in the mountains. Uh, and I didn't really brief the go around. Um, if I'm just being like totally honest, I was following a friend in there and um, I didn't do my part as a pilot. I'll just raise my hand on that. And so I was com felt committed to the approach because I didn't know what going around through the valley would look like. Um, and I, there was a moment there where I was really afraid I was not going to get the airplane on the ground or stopped before the end of the runway, which is a bunch of trees. And I turned off, like I shut down the airplane, made it, and then pulled off and shut down. And I was just like, what did I just do? And as I've had time to reflect on that, I really realized that there wasn't any one really bad decision. It was just all of them kind of lined up. I heard someone in the comments explain it this way. It's kind of the Swiss cheese model where it's like Swiss cheese has a bunch of little holes in it. It's not that big of a deal. But if all of those holes line up, you can see right through it. That's when the problem happens. It's when all the holes line up. So that is one way you can get hurt. That's what you need to be on the lookout for is progressively making worse decisions. The other thing that can get you hurt and things that have scared me in the plane is when you assume things are the way that you left them. Like if you get back in your own plane that you own, but it was in the shop and you think that all the circuit breakers are in or the fuel selector is where you left it, it might not be. So never, ever, ever, I'm telling myself this, never assume something is the way that it is when you go through the checklist. Like take half a second to actually do what it says on the checklist. I know that sounds obvious while we're sitting here, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking the thing, but in real life, like that can get you. So those few points will by and large keep you safe in the airplane. Next, when it comes to training, I have taken five different check rides over the course of my hours. And I can tell you this, no one has it all together. Every time that I've walked into a flight school, I'm always insecure about like, oh, what do I not know? Or that guy sure looks like he has it all together. Like, look how he's walking. Look at, you know, look, <laughs> look how prepared he is or whatever. And I can tell you that most people are probably looking at you thinking the same thing. Like they're thinking about the stain on their shirt. They hope it, that you don't see. Like nobody has it together. Some people are much farther ahead than you, right? Like they're at hour 10,000 and you're at hour 10. And so that is going to create a difference of like, there's a knowledge gap there. There's an experience experience gap there. But like anyone who has any ounce of humility will tell you we're all still learning when it comes to aviation. We're all still brushing up on regulations that are just hard to like keep at the top of your mind. Like everyone is a student at the end of the day. Next, when it comes to training, I want to encourage you that none of the things you have to learn and keep memorized as a pilot are really all that hard. Like some things are harder than others, but most of the problem is just the quantity. It's not the quality of information that's difficult necessarily, it's the quantity of information. And the sooner you realize that, the better off you will be because a lot of this just takes repetition and it takes time and it takes exposure. And over the course of time, um, like I think about it this, if you've ever set up like your thumbprint on a new iPhone, like if you were an Android person, like. I'm not even sure I'd know how to hold a regular conversation with you. So you probably can't relate to this. But on an iPhone, like when you set up your uh, thumbprint, you have to do it a few times. And I love what the graphic does. It's like, okay, on that first on that first thumbprint, like the top kind of gets filled in. The next one, the side gets filled in. Do it a couple more times, different angles. And then all of a sudden the whole, it, it knows your thumbprint, right? Which 
debatable if that's even a good idea. But the point is, the more touch points you give it, the more that you fill in that complete picture of what's going on. And aviation is really, really similar. And so over the course of time, I've realized like, okay, maybe what I memorized on this first pass, I missed some of this other stuff, but next time with some real world experience, oh, that's when that concept clicks. So that's why I'm saying everybody's a student. You're just gonna need reps and exposure. And because I have been so overwhelmed with the quantity of information that you have to know as a pilot, I spent almost a year and a half creating this set of robust private pilot flashcards. There's over 350 in the set and I like, it was a beast to make, but I, I got tired of being so nervous for check rides and walking into flight reviews being like, I don't know, what do I study for this? Like, it seems like all the information is here and there and there. I was like, I literally need it in a box. I need it right in front of me so that I feel like I can attack it and it's all in one place. And so I went through a lot of work to try to create that myself, had a talented pool of instructors that help with oversight and reviewing and approving all of this stuff. So I hope you'll check it out. I hope that it can help you. It's over at airplaneacademy.com slash flashcards. And I think it can make the quantity of information that you need to know a little bit more approachable. Next in training, and man, I wish someone would have told me this sooner, the middle is going to be the hardest part. There's this really cool chart we'll put up on the screen that's like the emotional cycle of change. Anytime you pursue something difficult or that takes a little while, and when you start out, you have all of this uninformed optimism. Like you're pumped, you have no clue how hard it's gonna be, but you're just dreaming of the end outcome, but you, you have no appreciation for like what you're about to endure. <laughs> and so you're optimistic. And then as you get into things, all of a sudden that, that uninformed optimism flips. It turns into informed pessimism you're like, oh shoot, what did I get myself into? Like, this is hard. And that feeling is probably going to get worse and worse as we go down the curve here until the middle, which is referred to as the valley of despair. Sounds overly dramatic, but I promise, like if you've been there, it's accurate. Where you're like, you're tired and you also have an appreciation for the amount of work left. And you're like, I, I don't know, this is, this is gonna be really difficult, it's gonna take a while. But if you can push through that, it will get better. Like, and you will climb the curve here to where you all of a sudden have informed optimism. Like, you're like, you can see the light of the tunnel and you're confident that you can finish. And then if you keep going, you'll finish your goal. And so flight training totally, totally follows this pattern. If you're not expecting it, you're not ready for that middle, like you will probably quit in the middle. Love you, but that's probably where you'll quit. And I know because that's where I quit. In my commercial rating, I quit more than once because life got in the way. I got into the, the valley of despair. I was like, oh man, there's a lot of stuff to rememorize. There's a lot of man new maneuvers, you know, then the weather's bad and then the plane's in the shop and like you get behind, life gets in the way, right? Like I quit multiple times. And so the other big piece of advice here I have from my own experience is as much as you can, try to do a dedicated sprint. If you're gonna get your private or anything else, like don't just take it casually. I mean, do the best you can, but as much as you can, really try to say, look, my life is, it, this isn't gonna be the most important thing, right? Like you got like family and kids and whatever, that's more important. But like everything else, all these other things that I could pursue right now, like I'm gonna pause all of that because I'm all in on training. And so in evenings, most evenings a week, I'm studying, I'm not catching up on Netflix. I might not be watching the game or something, unless that's just part of your recovery and you know help, helps you stay in the game longer because you can actually relax and recover. But the point is like, do a dedicated sprint. And when I finally did that for my commercial rating, like that's when I actually passed. That's when I got things done. Most nights after the kids went to bed, I was studying. A lot of, you know, several mornings a week, really early before work, I was going and getting uh, my flight training knocked out and stuff. And it just kind of revolved around it until I got it done. Then I did the same thing with my multi-commercial. And I'm like, now like this, this is how I'll do it for, for now on. <laughs> Anything big, like dedicated sprint for the win. And something else that can help with this is just to get every baby step on the calendar. Like never leave a lesson without having your ne next lesson on the calendar. Never leave a study session without having the next study session on your calendar. If you're on, if you're like just in the very beginning stages of your training right now, and like maybe putting a, a, a thing on your calendar tomorrow to call the flight school and book the discovery flight is the next step. Like put something on the calendar to just keep the momentum moving. And I really just wanna encourage you that you can do it. Like that's, that's probably the most important part like the message of my channel is just, you can do it. And I wanna read you a comment that I got a little while, little while, little while back uh, from a guy named Matt. I got to connect with him after he left this comment. I was just like blown away by his story. And I think it'll encourage you. He said, last year I stumbled upon one of your videos. You were encouraging those who wanted to become a pilot to just do something towards making that happen. Take a discovery flight, etc. I had found reasons to put it off for years, but after watching that, I took a flight. And that was more than a year ago. And on Monday, I passed my private pilot check ride. My journey required juggling a full-time job, a second full-time job I needed to pay for flying, 
two kids, and then a surprise newborn joining the party. Despite many challenges, a childhood dream is in the logbook. And for those who doubt it's possible, I did it with family and a single income. It was hard, but it's possible. So way to go, Matt, and all the people that it will encourage. Um, I'm thankful for you. And then in terms of flying the plane, I would say that most of my flying advice in terms of actually flying the airplane really comes down to two words. It's getting good at energy management. And I think the best way to get good at energy management is to be comfortable flying slow and landing short. So I really, really suggest that at some point when the time is right, go train with a flight school that specializes in like landing on grass and landing short. You can go to guys like Tac Aero, who I've gotten to film with a few times, like awesome, 10, 11 out of 10 in terms of their flight training and just them as people, like awesome, awesome guys and gals down there in Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh, I got to fly in a Top Cub with them and film it. I'll put the footage here on the screen where we landed on like progressively shorter airstrips and then ultimately landed on this like sandbar next to a river. And like, I was just, I was just hooping and hollering. Like it, <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Nice and it was so cool, but it really stretched me to like get more comfortable flying slow uh, and landing short. And that's when you're gonna get really good at energy management, trying to make the airplane do exactly like what you want it to. And like, and this is my airplane landing right here. Like make it land where and when you want it. And so if you can fly with guys like that or um, fly Oz out in Arkansas, like they they specialize in that stuff too. Or go get your seaplane rating. I'd say like one of the one of the coolest, I got my seaplane rating in Alaska. So like that was mind blowing up there. But uh, in Texas, like the coolest moment I had, and it was with Tac Aero again, was landing in the seaplane near Marble Falls. We actually got to taxi under a bridge. So I was like, I've never never been under something in an airplane before, which is which is kind of crazy. But we got to we got to do this really, really cool approach kind of coming around this mound where you had to land before a dam. And so it's kind of a short field landing in a seaplane. And so you're kind of having to come down and like hug this ridge and stuff. And so you're really having to manage your energy. And I ended up coming a little too fast. Everything went okay, but it was like a really good lesson in just really making the airplane do what you want. And then you can get into some really beautiful scenic interesting places if you can be really good at energy management. So try to get with people like that that can teach you that stuff. You'd just be amazed what an airplane can do. But even short of that, if you're just flying around in your 172 or whatever, uh, just practice slow flight. If you can get really, really good at slow flight, it's gonna make your landings better. Um, it's gonna make everything better. So that's something we usually learn early on in training and then it's not necessarily that fun <laughs> of a maneuver, but like it's so, so helpful to be comfortable flying slow. And before my last point here, I wanna let you know of a free resource you might not be aware of. Uh, recently, I put together a really long PDF that shares 88 takeaways from my 18 years in flying. So the stuff I've screwed up, the things that thankfully I've done right, uh, and it's really, really skimmable. It's like color-coded section of here's here's the story and here's my takeaways. So you can just skim all 88 takeaways. Hopefully it can help you in your flying journey. It's totally free. It's over at airplaneacademy.com slash takeaways. I'll also put the link down in the description. And I'd say one area that most pilots, myself included, uh, struggle with when we're learning to fly is talking to air traffic control. It can be really intimidating. Like I learned in the Dallas class Bravo airspace. And so it's it's intimidating when it's like you and a Southwest jet and all these people are like, oh, help me. But I promise it gets so much easier and it can really, really it can boil down to one thing and that's knowing what to expect. And once you know what to expect and you realize it's like 95% the same thing over and over and over, like your confidence and proficiency will just skyrocket. And to help you do that, in the video on the screen, I walk you through an average flight coming in and out of a towered airport, talking to approach control and stuff, try to make it really easy for you so that you'll know what to expect so you can be confident too. So I will see you over in that video.